Welcome to a very special live episode of Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Wednesday, November 1st. I'm your host, Tom Moore. The Rutgers game is in three days. The game against Michigan in 24 days. Joined live inside the Woody Hayes Athletic Center by Tony Gert with Tony Gertman. Not by Tony, by Tony Gertman. I don't know. Anyway, Tony, Tony's here. We're, we're at the Woody. Get to uh, talk to Ohio State head coach Ryan Day, Ohio State defensive coordinator Jim Knowles about a whole mess of stuff. Mm-hmm. I guess, Tony, let's just right off the top give everyone a little bit of an injury update as much yeah. as we can. I, there were lots of questions, and then right at the end it was like, an, oh, by the way, uh, a pretty significant Ohio State player is out for the rest of the season. Yeah. Hey, Ryan, is there an update on Mayan Williams? Yeah, he's actually out for the season. Had a procedure done and is done for the year. And, you know, we had wondered, like, he just showed up on the availability report mm-hmm. last week, and it's like, this is odd. And so I had a procedure done. Uh, I think he said not not an ACL, which is about as, I, I think, um, maybe Bill Rabinowitz or Joey Kaufman asked for, was it an ACL? And he's like, no. So there's only 40 other things it could be, but – um, unfortunately, yeah, done for the year. If you make us play the process of elimination game, it's not technically a HIPAA violation. Fun fact. I don't know. Maybe it is. Probably not. Um, elsewhere on the team, in terms of injuries, Kyle McCord banged up. Sounds like he's going to go. Devin Brown still banged up, but sounds like he's going to practice some, and then they'll just kind of mm-hmm. see how it goes. I-, I thought it was very interesting. Ryan Day was asked a couple times, like, so when you're a quarterback, like, Kyle McCord and you have you know we saw him walking out with an enormous bag of ice and maybe even a walking boot on that left ankle so I don't think it's a tremendous you know mystery what the injury is so he was you know Ryan was asked you know so when you have a lower body injury like that with a quarterback how does that impact things he really didn't want to talk about like he answered he he got asked the question twice he he answered two questions neither of them was that question so you know I, I think it's pretty obvious if just thinking about it like lower body you're going to be driving with your back leg and planting on your front leg so that's gonna you you figure that's gotta impact his play but with Devin Brown still you know sort of a little bit of a question mark right now and Tristan Jebbia being the next man up after that you you get the sense we're going to see Kyle McCord almost no matter what this weekend yeah and it's you know if it would be his right foot or right ankle that's what you're you know throwing off of but just dropping, you're, you're pushing off of your left, dropping mm-hmm. back. So, like, mm-hmm. there's going to be some pain, some delay mm-hmm. there, some, you know, timing, just whatever it is. But, yeah, it was interesting. He didn't really want to say, like, well, this is why this was. Or He said everybody's banged up this time of year. Mm-hmm. My question I was going to go in with is, you know, would you consider, could he use a week off? Mm-hmm. Like C.J. Stroud – in 2021 but that was against akron in september yeah and uh, i i went away from that question because it there was no point in like, he, he never made it seem like yeah we need to give him a break or anything like that yeah. it was just like no you play through it and then he talked about as as coach pick always says nobody cares <laughs> oh you're hurt nobody yeah. and he you know discussed playing hurt mm-hmm. playing injury with an injury there's you know two different things but Basically, you are the quarterback of the team, so you need to do whatever you can to be on the field, and especially with your backup being hurt as well. So they're just, you know, do a bunch of treatment. Uh, sometimes, you know, we've seen some legendary treatment around here, 24 hours a day, basically, mm-hmm. with Adam Stewart just uh, bunking, basically, yeah. with, with people to get their, their tendons and their ligaments and their, you know, every, bones right, basically. And uh, Emeka Abuka, he is – he was apparently – Okay to play last week, just didn't play last week. We'll see if he plays this week. At this point, I almost am not paying attention to what they say about Emeka <laughs> Ibuka or what's on the availability report of Emeka mm-hmm. Ibuka, and we'll just see the first snap of the game when they're on offense. Oh, well, let's see if I see number two out there because that, that that is the point at which I will believe that Emeka Ibuka is going to play. I, I mean, I assume he could play this weekend. I assume he probably could have played last weekend. But you're in a spot where you didn't need them against Wisconsin, and Rutgers is Rutgers is solid this year. They're six and two, but they're you know, mm-hmm. it's still literally Rutgers. So you don't you probably this is probably not. It, you didn't hear Ryan talk about this as a matchup game, which you hear when it's Penn State week or it's Michigan week or it's Notre Dame week. You know, he's not going to say yeah, it's Rutgers, but it's you know when he doesn't say it's a matchup game, 
that means, yeah, it's Rutgers. Yeah, well, and he will is expected to practice this week, which sounds like did he not practice much last week, but was still good to go for the game if they wanted to. I do think you need to get him going so that he's, yeah. he's full speed by the time you get to Michigan. But you also have two games after this before the Michigan game right. to to do that. Um, you know, but they, they took him last week, so there was a, there was a in case of an emergency break mm-hmm. Mecca Buka out, and so I would. Ex- I'm with you. Like I expect him to play, but I it's hard for me to believe anything because of what we've seen so far. Right. Yeah. And uh, it, fascinating stat from our buddy Marcus Hartman of the Dayton Daily News. I was just walking back in here and I was talking to him and he brought this up and he said, you can use this. And I said, oh, oh don't worry, I will. Uh, Ohio State has a chance to do something on Saturday that they have never done in program history before. Can you tell me what it is? Well, it's not go 9-0 and because they've done that before. Something they've never done in program history. Um, I have no clue. Win their 10th consecutive game from the start of a series against an opponent. They have never played a team 10 times without losing. They've played Maryland nine times, but they didn't play in 2020. So, therefore, they're 9-0 and against Maryland. They're 9-0 and against Rutgers. They have a chance to go 10-0 and against Rutgers to win on Saturday. They were 9-0 and against Oregon a couple of years ago and then lost that game. Uh, he said they were 8-0-1 oh, against Missouri and lost to Missouri at some point in like the 1970s. So they've gotten close, but they've never actually done it. And, you know, even any of the in-state schools like Miami, they're 6-0 and oh against mm-hmm. – they haven't played OU or Bowling Green or Kent State or Akron or whoever enough times to qualify. And, you know, all the schools they played in the very early days, Otterbein and yeah. Oberlin and all those teams, they managed to lose to, you know, all of them at some point. So chance for a real life, real life Ohio State history on Saturday. If World War II would have lasted like 10 years, maybe they could have gone 10-0 against the Iowa Flight School or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, COVID, they could have done it against Maryland. Already, yes. They're a game down on that series. Yes. Yeah, very much so. Um, so, Tony, wishing we could extend World Wars, Kevin. No, I'm just I'm just saying. <laughs> um, also, sounds like what your friend Marcus is saying is that Rutgers is due. I, If Rutgers being due meant anything, they would have a lot more than one national championship that coming in the year when there were only literally two teams playing college football. Mm. A uh, hundred and what uh, sixty years ago, give or take. So you're saying it was a full national championship, <laughs> though. Well, I mean, some teams can some teams can win full national championship. Others, others have to share. Um, just Lathan I, Ransom. I, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lathan Ransom. Yeah. Sorry, I was I was running through the injuries. Yes. So uh, Tony Lathan Ransom. Uh, yeah. Not expected to play. There's no timetable. No information on the injury. Brian Day said they know more. They know more now than they did after the game, but they'll know more later in the week. And I did not get the impression that he would be playing this week or you know, maybe next. We'll see. But uh, even Jim Knowles was talking about what they'll do in his absence mm-hmm. with Sonny Styles there as the the bandit safety. Yeah, that did not feel imminent at all. The way he talked about it and just the vibe. And this is purely vibes is either there's a test or a procedure that's going to be done and at that point you you know more but yeah the the, we know more than we did before but we'll know more later in the week maybe you're waiting for some kind of swelling to go down or something but yeah it was it was very clearly not like yeah this is about he's about to be back that that is not the case at all so then the question becomes okay tony what do they do in the back end of that defense yeah then it's basically sunny styles at that spot at the strong safety josh proctor will stay there at free safety and you're going to play a whole bunch of jordan hancock you know mm-hmm. at nickel and really he, he's going to have to be the the strong nickel as well mm-hmm. i think in this situation but he's got the mentality for it he's been very aggressive and very physical this season so there's that i did ask jim Knowles. If there comes a time where you want to sub him out, could you move Jermaine Matthews or somebody like that? Because it is a lot to ask of a freshman. Mm -hmm. And they said, no, they'll keep him outside, but you could move any other, any of the other corners, meaning to me, Denzel Burke or Davis Mm Nigbenos, and you can move them inside if you need to. Mm -hmm. But just a kind of a, an emergency thing. If uh, one guy goes down, who moves there? Because there's some moving pieces that aren't going to be able to be moving anymore because you need Sonny Styles at that strong safety spot. 
Cameron Martinez played in the dime this past week. He's another option for them as well, although he didn't really say anything about putting him at nickel mm-hmm. um, in, in this emergency situation that I created for him. Yeah, and this was, you know, Cam Martinez played a little bit, and Jim Knowles said he's been hurt a lot this year, just sort of banged up, and so you haven't seen much of him this year. They think he might be someone who can help them against faster slot receivers, but that's, you know, that, that sounds like a, you know, multiple moving parts kind of situation. Uh, you do get the sense that Jordan Hancock has, Jordan Hancock has, I think, shown them he can do all the things you need to do to be that that nickel guy and fill that slot corner kind of position. Mm-hmm. He feels like someone whose stock has risen about as much as anyone on the defense so far this year. Yeah, for sure. And he's a guy that, I, I didn't know this, but we, they've talked in weeks past, that they recruited him to do this, play mm-hmm. this nickel spot, to play in the slot, play outside, play in the slot. And he's, that's one of the reasons he came here for it. Remember, he was committed to Clemson for mm-hmm. a while and they got, they got him to flip from, from there. But, you know, this is what he is when he's healthy and when he's been comfortable and in a defense for year two, like we talked with all of these guys, they know so much more. They're, they're faster. They're uh, able to diagnose. They know why they're being asked to do something. They know why the play is being called the way it is. So he's been a fantastic, uh, I don't even want to say addition, but uh, Mm -hmm. certainly an addition. I do wonder what happens then when you are playing offenses that where Sonny would be the Sam is that now, do you now play Cody Simon as that Sam with Steele and Tommy Eichenberg? Is that an early down thing? Because it seems like they would put Cody Simon in before they would put another safety back and move Sonny Styles up. Like, unless, you know, we've seen Jordan Hancock playing that slot. You're sometimes just based on emotion. You also become the field safety. Yeah. The deep safety. Yeah. So is that something, another moving part there where Sonny can come down <laughs> And Jordan Hancock goes back. I'm going to answer this like uh, Ohio State coaches answer it uh, when they don't want to answer it. And they, uh, uh, the answer is, well, Tony, it depends on the matchup. Oh, oh. So, uh, the matchup. Yeah, yeah. So we'll uh, – I mean, you want to talk about a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of moving parts there, both in terms of scheme, opposition, personnel, injuries, all that kind of stuff. But with those two, it would only be those two moving parts. You yeah. know, they would yeah. basically just switch, Yeah. you know, and maybe Josh Proctor slides over like – there's a way to make it work without pulling mm-hmm. anybody off the field, I guess. Yeah. Um, but it's it's still a lot to ask of all of those guys. Right, yeah. Um, and then on the one of the other things that was a very popular topic of conversation was the play of Travion Henderson, the all of a sudden, hey, Ohio State looks like you can run the ball again. And, you know, it, it sounds very much like better, but not where it needs to be ultimately. Yeah, and Ryan Day talked about it. It's something we talked about every week where you know, maybe there's just one missed block or one guy didn't reach far enough or had his eyes in the wrong place. But it's certainly gotten better. But also this Wisconsin defense gave up you know, 200 yards rushing to like three teams this year. So this is something that they've done in the past. So I don't think we can say everything is fixed. And certainly Ryan Day, after watching the film, didn't say everything was fixed. But – what Travion Henderson does is gives your offensive line an ability to make some mistakes, you know, and, and mm-hmm. get away with some mistakes. And then the way he's fresh and running hard, I think it it makes everybody feel better and 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 feel get more aggressive with the with the run blocking. But the uh, the addition of him in the passing game as well creates issues. So just having him on the field is one more guy for the defense to have to worry about. And right now he's their number two playmaker, although he's getting the ball more than anybody else. So doesn't he become actually the number one playmaker? It, well, I guess it depends on how you're defining it in terms of yards per play or uh, plays per game. But yeah, it, it still feels like Marvin Harrison is the guy who is the one who would be the, the biggest loss if he wasn't available. But why would you even say that? Yeah. Well, uh, they, you know, and, and Trey Van Henderson, though, obviously you saw what he brings to the offense mm-hmm. and what he brings to the offense when he comes back. Um, one thing, when you can get coaches to talk about like something very specific in a ton of detail, I, I feel like that's a lot of times one of the most interesting things you get. And it, Ryan Day talked in great detail about the second play of the game. And it was a play where I don't, did Calvin Cork get sacked on the play or? I, 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 it, it was it was either a sack or it, it was, it was a negative play or some kind, yeah. yeah. Where 
it all started with the fact that there was a low snap. So Kyle McCord has to bend down and get the low snap. That meant his eyes were low, so he didn't see that there was a linebacker coming. The offensive line, uh, Josh Simmons, had a defensive end that was closer, and the defensive the offensive lineman's job is to block the you know the biggest threat, the most imminent threat. So he blocks the defensive lineman. He, that means he's not blocking the, the linebacker. The linebacker's coming clean. Oh, that's okay because Ohio State had a hot read on that play. Mm-hmm. He was supposed the ball was supposed to go to Travion Henderson. Travion Henderson was there. There were a couple blockers out front. They were all set up to have a big play, even though there was a blitzer coming clean. But because Kyle McCord had a low snap and his eyes were low, that meant he didn't see the guy coming which meant he didn't go to the hot read immediately. Mm-hmm. And then by the time he re- saw it, it was like, uh-oh. And then the play got blown up. So it's amazing how you can have all this other stuff in place. And then it's like, well, the snap was at his ankle. So therefore that blew the whole thing up. And, you know, Ryan Day talked about this in terms of you have to, they have to be so focused on details. They have to get all the little stuff right every time because you can have everything else right, and then one little thing goes wrong, and that can blow everything up. Yeah, whether it's protection or looking in the wrong place, just that whole the, the play was doomed from the snap, mm-hmm. and that's just and uh, that's just an assumed, understood part of the game that it's always going to be perfect. That's everything is designed with the snap being perfect, mm-hmm. and when it's not, it causes all kinds of chaos, and and everything else designed around it can just be lost in the wash because this one thing has set everything else else off schedule. And then you've got to, as Ryan Day said, have a plan for any kind of uh, outcome that is uh, not, not the plan. And you got to have a plan for when the plans don't mm-hmm. work out, Tom. And uh, quarterbacks hate it when a plan doesn't come together. <laughs> so do coaches. Uh, do we have anything else before we get on to the Connor Stallions news hour? I have nothing. Okay, so hooray, it's time for the Connor Stallions News Hour. Really, We really need like a jingle or something for this. Um, so Central Michigan University put something out that uh, they are investigating uh, a man who, you know, looks similar to Connor Stallions who was on the sidelines for, East, for Central Michigan uh, during their game against uh, at, at Michigan State. It was the Friday of week one, so Michigan played on Saturday, but Connor Stallions theoretically had the night off on Friday. Uh, Brian Cook from MGO Blog said on Twitter that it was Stallions. Um, you know, that's that's all. That, that, that has not been confirmed, confirmed, but, you know, generally he's probably in connection, in, in contact with Michigan people. So um, when he says, uh, yes, this is Stallions, I assume it means, yes, this is Stallions. And... The fascinating thing about this, I mean, well, first, first of all, this kind of shoots a hole in, uh, you know, oh, well, he never did any off-campus scouting. So, you know, there was there, you know, mm. th- there was there was this idea and I don't think this was backed up by anything real, but that, well, if it wasn't a Michigan employee doing it, then it's OK, because you can show me in the rule book where it says and it's like, show me in the rule book where it says it's OK if it's not. But so that, okay, that shoots a hole in that. And I went back and looked at just just these couple screen caps that were posted online on uh, on uh, Tuesday morning. I woke up by the way. I put this on Twitter. The first thing I saw was just you posting the Bobby Valentine in the mustache and glasses picture. And I opened my phone, and this is the first thing I see. And I'm like, oh lord, what on <laughs> earth? What did the Mets do now? And no, it was uh, you know. So this person who looks incredibly like Connor Stallions, um, what were we interested in when he was on the sidelines for Michigan? Who is he standing next mm-hmm. to? Because that tells me who he's talking to and what he's doing there. And um, he was standing next to uh, Central Michigan run game coordinator Tavita Thompson on at least three different occasions during the that I could find during the uh, cut down highlights version of the broadcast, which means you know I, I only saw him like four times and three times he was standing next to a guy who. Uh, was the he's listed as the um, run game coordinator slash offensive line coach, uh, Central Michigan's offensive coordinator and wide receivers coach Paul Petrino was up in the press box, so that's probably the highest ranking person on the sideline. So, you know, you look at the pictures and it's like, well, he's standing right next to kind of a close analog to who he was standing next to the sidelines uh, on the sidelines next to during the Michigan games. 
the uh, the tweet from uh, MGo blog says that uh, from Brian from MGo blog says no Michigan didn't know no Central Michigan didn't know dude got a sideline pass arrived in full Central Michigan coaching gear and snuck into the restricted area. Uh, quote from uh, Brian Cook from MGo blog on a uh, WTKA radio show last week. Quote, people on Ohio State Twitter are watching these last two games and showing the fact that Stallions was next to the defensive coordinator, which is dot, dot, dot. He's the sign guy. Where else would he be standing? Tony? Where else would he be standing? Well, I think it's fascinating that he snuck in mm-hmm. with uh, some sort of a pass, mm-hmm. with some sort of laminated play sheet in mm-hmm. his hand as mm-hmm. well. <clears throat> now... I don't know where the plausible deniability or, or or any of that is in this because, again, he's standing next to coaches. He is um, scouting an opponent or just look, watching an opponent, whatever, however, whatever verb you want to use. He's there. Um, as you said, he is the sign-stealing guy reportedly. So, um, you know, this isn't a thing where he, he just buys tickets for friends. No, this is uh, – some people are saying it's him going to these game, going to that game, and I think other people have said it's not the only game, and mm-hmm. maybe more will come out on that. But it's like the the excuses, the reasoning. The I saw a, a later tweet saying that you know this is just a crazy super fan. It's like no, this is an employee <laughs> of the Michigan football department. Mm-hmm who is being paid by the Michigan football department to do whatever he does. Mm-hmm. And he f- continues to do it. And also not just doing it for Michigan, but apparently Michigan's one of Michigan's uh, you know, opponent of their rivals. Mm-hmm. And it is the, the lengths that they will go to at this point, it just could be argued that there are, there are no bounds to what mm-hmm. they will do to mm-hmm. upset or um, just get over on an, uh, mm-hmm. uh, on a rival. Well, and there's some overlap between the Central mm-hmm. Michigan coaching staffs and the Michigan coaching staffs, which, you know, I mean, you can tell me that he, you know, showed up and, uh, you know, whatever, printed his own credential and was standing on the sidelines all by himself and no one knew anything about it. And then he was just standing right next to the yeah. uh, run game coordinator for large chunks of the game uh, and the run game coordinator never turned to him and said, hey, who are you? Hey, why are you, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm going to assume that he said something to him at some point during the course of the game, maybe. Um, he had a BB credential, yes. visitor yes. bench. Yes, yes, the visitor. It's not a media credential, it's not a hanger-on credential, mm-hmm. it is an official mm-hmm. credential to be inside the bench area. Yes, and so the statement from Central Michigan says, uh, this is from at Tony Paul, 1984, uh, I think he's a Detroit news reporter, if I remember correctly. Central Michigan is investigating whether since suspended UM staffer Connor Stallions was on the Chippewa sideline for the season opening MSU game. Previously, a CMU spokesperson told the news that Stallions' name was not on any official sideline pass list. Statement from AD Amy Folan. Uh, quote, we became aware of these photos late yesterday, and we are in the process of determining the facts surrounding them. As, as this process is ongoing, we have no further comment at this time. Does this mean that Connor Stallions is going by an alias when he perhaps went to this game? Like, what would be... I regret pointing the microphone towards Kevin. <laughs> that, refer- that mistake will not be repeated. This is Joey Freshwater around Mexico? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, it is the Great Lake State. Joey Joey Freshwater would be a great uh, a great uh, nom de plume there. I, I mean, it feels a lot like you'd have to really be really be giving the benefit of the doubt to an awful lot of people to believe no 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 one other than this one crazy person this one lunatic who's using an axe and chopping down the door while his poor wife is in the bathroom he has done this all on his own he has gotten this pass somehow he has gone there he has stood on the bench next to these coaches who just want to be left alone he appears to be doing exactly, exactly what he does when he's with Michigan. So, number one, you're, you're not allowed to be there. That right? There's no, there's no gray area there. You're not allowed to be there. Number two, if he's stealing signs, even if he's just stealing signs in game, you're not allowed to be there. Mm. 
but you know, is did he have an advanced impression? There was paper in his hands. I mean, we don't know what was on the paper, but it it just the idea that this is the lone gunman, the one the one crazy nut who is just doing this by himself seems somewhat fanciful to me at this point the the low level the magic bullet low level staffer mm -hmm. theory uh if you just look back into the left mm -hmm. that sort of thing uh and you every step of the way you have to really twist yourself into what this could be mm -hmm. you know, yeah could right I, well, could if all the explanations and hand waving about it just feels very much like well I, the, I have shot the arrow and the arrow has hit the spot where it says it, it has hit a spot and right there i have written i don't know nothing and i have painted a bullseye around it and look the arrow has hit the i don't know nothing and i'm just going to read it again quote people on ohio state twitter are watching these last two games and showing the fact that stallions was next to the defensive coordinator which is dot 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 he's the sign guy where else would he be standing it's a tony it's a great question it is a good question and uh we we saw precisely where he or somebody like him looking like him was on the central michigan sideline now tom i will say a few weeks back maybe a month or so ago there was a uh a tourist train in Colorado where some passengers got video of Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. But it's probably just a guy in a suit. Mm -hmm. Now, this is holiday, uh, Halloween weekend. Mm -hmm. And we have seen some guys in some Connor Stallion suits. Mm -hmm. So, although this is back in September before he was known. Mm. I mean, sometimes people, never never wrong just early. I mean, that's, <laughs> that, that is that is some... Uh, you know, I mean, that, that's some foresight to dress as Connor Stallions before anyway. I mean, you got to you got to explain your costume a lot of times. Yeah, yeah. But, but some some people like that. Ask yes. me about my costume. Yes, that sort of thing. Uh, while you think about uh, Kevin, why don't you th find out if we have any questions? While Tony tells us about his costume. Yes. No, I don't. Go ahead, Kevin. I was going to say, Market X is CMU in cahoots with Jim Harbaugh. It feels like it is the most ridiculous cheating scheme ever, or a troll, a total troll job by UM. So. That's an interesting question, and we don't have enough information to be able to answer that clearly right now. I would say the balance of probability is that at least one other person at Michigan and or CMU knew about this. It's more likely that someone else knew about it than no one knew about it, given just what we know about where he was, where, you know, where, where he was not just on the bench with a visiting bench pass but also where he was on the visiting bench and who he was next to well also i don't know that uh, so he's gonna in theory this is how it would work right he would request or somebody would request on his behalf from cmu who would then give their list of people to msu right and not that they're necessarily going to cross-reference that generally they'll take what names you give them as mm -hmm. whatever but you're still not going to put a michigan staffer's name on that list right right i mean and they're not checking ids once you have your like I, i'm sure that they did he come in with the team well I, that's a tremendous question um i i can't imagine he rode the bus with the team but you okay so the way credential pickup works is there's two different ways you do it one is and this is how credential pickup works for us hmm. sometimes the opposing team Wisconsin last week, for example, FedEx is the credentials to the Ohio State Sports Information Department and they distribute them to us. I would assume that's how it worked for the team that you are getting your credentials sent to you and then you, you get them at your hotel that morning or whatever and you put them on and you go. The other way is will call. I cannot imagine that no. the team has will call credentials. So this weekend at Rutgers, we may end up, we're not sure, we may end up having to go wait at the window mm -hmm. and show our ID and pick up the credentials. If the credentials are just issued, then you just get them and you don't have to show your ID or anything. So, you know, you, you could have a credential that says Joey Joe Joe Jr. Chabadu on it. And, That's then, the worst and then Connor Stallions is not on the yeah. pass list. But that requires someone at Central Michigan to put Joey Joe Joe Jr. Chabadu on the pass list, which means someone there knows mm -hmm. 
So yeah, if there, it, for, for you to have a, a pass on your, uh, you know, either someone gave it to you, mm -hmm. you stole it from someone, you know, maybe he's a sleight of hand artist, I don't know, or you were, you were on the pass list with, with some name. Yeah, and if, if this is him and he was on the pass list with a, a name that isn't his, that is purposeful deception. Right. And why are you doing this? Uh, well, mm -hmm. because I don't want to be found out for what I'm actually doing here. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. like there, there are levels to the deception there and you're, you're being deceptive there because you know what you're doing in theory is entirely wrong and against the rules. Yeah. And again, we don't know all the facts on this, but we are, I think, at least approaching and maybe have already entered don't pee on my leg and tell me it's raining territory like i i know you can pretend you can be that stupid i at, at some point like you gotta i gotta kind of like you, you you gotta give the rest of the world a little bit of credit you know? yeah come on yeah no it is it's it's not uh yeah you're not very far from that and you try to it's almost like humor them like i just mm -hmm. yeah but but eventually it stops being funny Right. Yeah. And, and I'm, again, I think we've been pretty reasonable and rational about this and are not trying to get way out ahead of it. But, you know, enough of this different stuff has kind of been like, yeah, that I think you're, you're starting to lose the benefit of the doubt on some of this stuff. Next, next question. Uh, Odysseus, more likely Siano and Day get into a shouting match. Or Tony enjoys a hot dog with mustard at this cataway. <sighs> Okay, so I know the answer to that one right now, and that is Brian Day and Chiano would get into a shouting match, fisticuffs. I mean, I'm not going to have a hot dog with mustard on it. That's not going to happen. Now there may be a little bit of mustard on whatever I choose to get, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to have a hot dog with mustard. That's gross. Um, Greg Chiano did say at his press conference on Monday, Brian Day was not asked about the fake punt dust up from last year's game. Greg Chiano, if you want to hear the full answer, you can hear it on the uh, podcast tomorrow morning episode for Tuesday. But Greg Ciano talked about the fact that, you know, hey, that wasn't about a fake punt. No one's upset about a fake punt. Everyone understood it was an automatic that they didn't have the edge covered. And Jesse Murko had been taught, like, well, you start rolling that way. And if there's no one there, like, just keep on rolling and keep and keep running. So they, you know, the, the issue was his he had a guy on the sidelines that uh, was surrounded by Ohio State people. And he said he was getting kind of shoved around and he felt it was a player safety issue. And that's why he went running across the field. And Ryan Day looked up and was like, hey, that's not, you You have the visitor's bench pass with, over there with Connor Stallions. Why, why are you over here on the home bench? And uh, allegedly. And um, so, yeah, he said, no, no bad blood, no anything. Mm -hmm. It's fine. No concerns. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not expecting either of those things to happen. Uh, over under for Jesse Merkel rushing yards this weekend, 26 and a half. Oh, man. That would be an incredible troll if they ran Jesse Merko. Three times. Three times, yeah. No puns. Mark Fetters, uh, in the first few games, there was a lot of issues with the running clock. Don't hear much about it now. Yeah, well, I think you, they've adjusted. I think you, you, you've you now come to realize what it is. It, just the first few games – it was a shock, and mm -hmm. so yeah, you're going to talk about the shock. And they were, they had games where they had fewer possessions than they've had in decades. So that's going to be something like, you know, this is legitimately a concern now. So then you deal with the concern and you learn to live with it, and then you move on because it's, nothing is going to change about it this year. Um, but you know, but if you look at the possessions, I think they've increased, and they're not. It's not been as drastic, but it may get a little short short this week against Rutgers, who will try to hold the ball. Mm -hmm. for as long as possible and you know part of that also is ohio state's doing a better job on defense getting mm -hmm. off the field on third down when you when you hold your opponent to one for 16 and six yeah. for 16 on third down well you, you get off the field and then you get the ball back and that helps with the number of possessions and number of snaps you're getting as well uh, the last one i have starred right now from odysseus who would look best firing the cannon tom tony or kevin that is a question you only ask if you've not seen me in a tri-corner hat. I don't... Ladies. <laughs> my thing with the cannon is I would fire and still jump. Mm -hmm. Because once you once you get got by that thing once, you're always just a little like, it's going to go off now, isn't it? It's yeah. like, no, it only goes off after touchdowns. But it might, it might go off right now, right? Well, I mean, 
it, it only goes off after touchdowns. And uh, it goes off when the team runs out at the beginning of the game, at halftime, at the end of the game, and anytime Rutgers scores. So generally that has meant three times a game during most Ohio State well, visits. And it was the end of the game that got me years and years ago. And um, I've, I've still not been right since. <laughs> Uh, in case you're wondering why it sounds like cannons are firing here, the Ohio State softball pitchers are uh, throwing uh, over on the other side. So, all right. Yes, that is our hint to uh, that is our hint to wrap it up and head on out. So, thank you guys all for joining us. I think we covered some interesting stuff mm -hmm. here. I'm sure there, Tony. I'm sure there's going to be plenty more to cover uh, in the coming days, especially later on tonight on Tuesday night when the first round of the college football playoff rankings are revealed. We'll be doing our usual live show starting at uh, 7 o'clock or thereabouts. Uh, might, might get a little bit of an early start. We've got to figure that out. But the best way to make sure you are there for us, with us for the whole thing, is to make sure you're subscribed at youtube.com slash Buckeye Huddle. Hit that bell so you get notified when we go live. That should be, there's going to be, a, we're going to learn a lot later on tonight. Yeah. It's not, you know, this is not the final rankings. This does not mean everything, but it, it is a good sense for, what is the committee thinking about Ohio State? And maybe even more interestingly, what is the committee thinking about Michigan? Because, and then Tony will be on the uh, conference call talking talking to uh, to our boo boo, and uh, talking to Bill Hancock, and maybe getting a sense for like so. How does this whole gestures vaguely uh, potentially impact things for you as a committee? I am real interested in that answer. I'm not sure we'll get one, but I'm real interested in that answer. So, got to ask it. Got to ask it. So we'll be uh, have all that for you a little later on tonight at youtube.com slash Buckeye Huddle. And, of course, you can find us all week long at BuckeyeHuddle.com. Our fantastic team of insiders covering the team, covering recruiting, covering X's and O's, making you a smarter football fan, all at BuckeyeHuddle.com, plus a very, very lively board. <laughs> a lot of stuff going on there. A lot of uh, talk, a lot of interesting information all there at the Huddle Board, presented by Jeff Ruby Steakhouse, all at BuckeyeHuddle.com. So if you'd like to support us, you'd like to learn a little more about Ohio State football, get us get to be a smarter football fan, you can do that at BuckeyeHuddle.com. So sign up today. That will do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow. <laughs>